Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, so let's uh, so yeah. let me let me break in here. So let's uh, start recording here. But um, so yeah, this is our first very humble meeting of the OS OSC 3D printer working group. We're building a team right now, so we're interviewing a bunch of people this week, and hopefully we can get the velocity up. But right now we're going through a basic uh, critical path document. So so lining up a plan for what we can do over the next. Uh, next few weeks so the idea is to run a workshop in germany which we have pretty much scheduled more or less for april 22nd right now that's a week after easter and then we're looking at uh how do we get there so the the good thing about the 3d printer is that we can work off existing 3d design 3d open source designs 3D printer designs because the RepRap project has pretty much paved the way for that for a number of years and you can pretty much take examine what are the best practices out there and then copy from them as a first start of, of um, you know where do we start on developing a complex machine like the 3D printer where well the good thing is there's plenty of work that's been done before already and we can build on it so that's a uh, that's the approach and then so so some critical elements so what we want to do and I'll, I'll refer to this roadmap but on a roadmap uh, first of all we okay what is all the work that's been done well we have also done some of the work to to take the existing designs and make them more modular so last year we have uh, developed or formalized the what's known as the universal CNC axis so I'll actually share my screen on that um, let me share that with you so you can see what I'm looking at on my screen. So I'll share my screen here. Share. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. So on the Universal CNC Access page on the wiki, you can see we have come up with a design of an axis that can be used. It's belt driven. It's got very simple belts. And we actually put it in, we have the 3D CAD for it already, but, and this is what it looks like, blown up. It's a, let's see if this works here. So we have the full bill of materials. We actually prototyped these already. We have several of these laying around. And the way it looks, I'm trying, there's a, actually a WebGL 3D explodable diagram here that's still loading. It will pop up in a second. But the idea of the frame the sorry the universal axis is that we have an axis that can be used for so this is how it looks it's kind of like a, basically your 3d printed piece with a couple of uh, rods and your um, motor that's the extruder part but it would have the drive motor so the, here are the 3d print files uh, and here we go with the actual picture so you can see we have a full 3d diagram of this so this is a basic axis you can take a look at this and rotate it around there's actually an explosion here this is thanks to Michel Dory from from Belgium this is like we have got the full detail of everything that goes in here and this is actually b based on a Prusa i3 looking at the concept of a simple axis and then um, refining it to be modular meaning that this we can put so let me show you the um, open source ecology or you can make that into various configurations from a small 3d printer so if we go to can you still, can you still that to, uh, plasma yes that's the whole point so i'm going to click on that 3d printer workshop so you got this little little axis and right now we're working with 3 8 inch rods so you can make a simple 3D printer out of that, but if you scale that up, you can you can make many more different things. Like so, say this is the basic 3D printer. Uh, this is an explanation of the axis. Now you can make a larger thing. So think about just enlarging enlarging the rods and multiplying the axes, or using larger. Like here, you might think these are would be like one inch rods. So for a CNC router. Um, so you can do a lot of different things with this basic these are all the same basic parts and the xyz axes are identical and that's the point we're reducing the part count so like for example here the z axis slides up and down on two of those modules and so forth so 
that's the general idea. That's the that's the pattern we want to do. So we we think we've got the na the frame pretty much nailed. The frame and the axis, universal axis, pretty much nailed. So what else remains? Well, there's a number of things. So so perhaps the number one thing to think about is um, so let's go back to the critical path. Um, so we need to fill in the other components. What are the other parts of a 3D printer? You've got um, let's see, maybe I can increase the size of that there that's the so I'm going back to the document uh, let me increase the size yeah so what are all the all the parts of a 3d printer well there's that's pretty well defined so you got an extruder you got a frame you got a heated bed um, so right now we're working on an extruder. We can say the frame, you know, we have good prior art on a frame. We're decent on that. Um, as far as the universal axis, let's do universal axis. That's um, pretty much done. Frame, that's easy. We just got to get some quotes and put this all together. But the, the question right now, the working question right now is the extruder. Let's take the extruder. So the way we approach it is minimum viable product. So what's the simplest way to get these things done? So there's extruder, there's the um, controller. It's a big one. But let's think about the simplest route we can implement. So let's take a controller that already exists, an extruder that already exists and adapt it to our, to our you know, make it fit with our universal axis and frame. So that would be the approach. Um, so the controller, um, take one off the shelf, and then add them to the universal axis and frame. Uh, there's also the heated bed. What else we got? Um, automatic height sensor, which was, we definitely want to do that because that's already available. Automatic height sensor. And what else do we have? Did I say heated bed? Yes. There's end stops for knowing when the when the thing is at the end of its motion. That's kind of like with the controller. End stops. Power. There's power supply. Uh, those are pretty much the some of the major components that we have for a 3D printer, breaking it down into different modules, but. All these are pretty much decently worked out, but our current step is, um, at this point, it's the extruder. So deciding on one, the best choice, and moving forward with it. So we've looked at the, we have a tech tree of choices for the, if we go to D3D, page on the wiki called D3D, that's our working page. Um, and in there, We've got uh, so so we've got a development template where we put in all the work that's being done on this project. Then we have the module breakdown. So the D3D extruder. So I'm going to click on that. The D3D extruder. We actually drew up this tech tree of choices, which means like looking at all the available different extruders that are out there. So we've looked at that a little bit. Uh, so actually mapping out what are the different features and then I also put the requirements in this thing so let's see let's zoom up on this so all the open source extruders well there's different ones so there's like uh, there's Lulzbot which is a good open source company which makes for example the more extruder which is this large one but the price is pretty hefty it's like the more extruder is like four hundred dollars by itself Lulzbot mini extruder is like hundred seventy five dollars there's these other much cheaper ones, um, like E3D V6, and it's actually what the Prusa i3 uses. So the Prusa i3 happens to be the most popular 3D printer in the world right now. It's actually, most of the printers in the world right now are Prusa i3s. So now that's that might tell you, hey, that maybe that's a good point to start with, since it's actually rated as one of the top printers for print quality and everything else, and it's got a nice little 3D. Uh, printer extruder 
Uh, so actually I, I put this here and here's a build manual for that. So actually full instructions for this 3, 3D printer extruder already exist and we can take that. And I would suggest we build on the, the Prusa i3 because it's the most popular lowest cost, cost option that's out there. So um, where did that build manual go? So that's a link right there actually in the diagram. You can click it and it takes you to the extruder page from Prusa i3. Uh, which I said is a good choice, so we just might as well build on it if it's a good choice, right? So, where did it go? Um, Prusa i3 extruder. No, that's the wrong link. Um, I want to pull that up from my email. Th that link is wrong in the diagram, so... I've been in contact with the people from the Prusa i3 asking about the 3D printers but they're and I wanted to get one but their delay time their lead time is about seven weeks which is really too late so I could ask them if they if they um, have any any ones that they can ship any sooner like any kind of a old model that they might have but here's um, the 3D printer um, manual from Prusa i3 there's the uh, assembly manual actually for the for the extruder so here it is so actually Prusa research the Prusa i3 people uh, has an extruder assembly complete here so you, you can see how, how that complete thing is made it actually has the 3d print files and it goes through the complete procedure so so with the bill of materials that's an e3d nozzle and it turns out this hot end is open source you can print in all the different plastics so it kind of shows you uh, what all is here so our next step would be to take this extruder and start working with it so basically get a complete instructional I mean here is a complete instructional you can say but now let's take a look at so the first step would be okay where do we find all the parts and how do we source all the parts if we want to build this thing? And the second thing is, well, um, why not? Well, we can use their actual axis, and we can go with that, and that would be easier than mounting on a, it on our universal axis. And perhaps that's a that's a good way to go for for now to completely replicate what Prusa i3 is doing here, so that we minimize the time to market or time to product here. We can take this exact manual and go from there in terms of making our 3d printer work so this is you know there's a lot of technical detail in here um but and so so like this thing right here that's actually their height sensor which um means that it be automatically levels the bed um, so the task for this week is to go forward and open sourcing this uh, open sourcing basically to our basically adapting it to our frame so that uh, what I would suggest is we take this exact printer assembly replicate it get a bill of materials so what we probably want to do is start a document um, let's see let's go to back to d3d here and we have the d3d extruder document so we can go click edit on it and then we can say okay as our point of strategy uh, let's go with the Prusa because it's fully open source and available for replication and it happens to be the best printer so we can't we can't go wrong with it so let's do that as the first cut does it make sense well yeah it's uh, it's a decent decent shot at what to do what are your thoughts on this so far I mean you think we should do that is that a good route yeah that's clever but, but yeah uh, does not what? Does not make sense. Uh, we were talking about uh, extruders that can print multiple uh, yes. filaments. Yes. So actually, if you look at the Prusa Research, so if we open up a new window and go to Prusa Research, Prusa3D.com the the statement on that is that it works with many many print print materials look at this supported materials PLA ABS PET hips flex 
PP, Ninja Flex, Laywood, Labric, Nylon, Polycarbonate. For us, the critical part is polycarbonate for glazing, uh, rubber for rubber parts and O-rings and wheels once we scale this, and then the standard filaments like PLA and ABS. So it looks to be fully... No, we're talking about, uh, what about, uh, I don't know if maybe I can misunderstand, about the uh, Oh, two awesome. filaments together. They have an ex expansion. They have a different head that they they can do that with. I think I think they have that. They have add-ons, um, which we don't need to worry about for now because we can always add that in okay, the future, it's not, right? It's not a requirement. No, no. It's uh. The point is that it's because it's modular. We can simply replace that head, like print some different parts or make it different, and then go to multiple filaments if we want to do that. But we don't need that right now. I mean not really necessary at this point so we can go with this and then the next question is let's see so it can print in multiple filaments I just wanted to check my email so I, I was in contact with with the guys from Prusa 3D and um, they don't have a bill of materials but you can find the SDL files for the printable files uh, the MK2 kit printer can print PET and flexible materials. You can see the ones we have already tried in our shop. Um, I believe the rest of the part of, on the MK2 are open source. Let's, please let me know if you are interested in some specific part and I will check it for you. So we can we can ask them some more questions. But yes, yeah, so they, they can print in multiple materials already with that uh, single nozzle apparently. And we should find out like how well it really prints uh, but for the sake of rapid development for the workshop let's just run with this full force full steam ahead knowing that this is the, one of the best printers and then we can say okay if it doesn't do well on say some kind of a material that we like like rubber then we can of course go back to it but the first step would be to really master uh, the existing technology right now so they say they don't have the bill of materials, so but we'd have to pretty much see if we can start tracing, tracking it down. Uh, so one way would be to, well, I mean, what we want to do right now is go to, you know, take a snapshot of this and pretty much we have the 3D print files, so we can, uh, we can for one start building a 3D model in CAD. We can do this in CAD and we can import. It would be nice to import all these parts into CAD because I don't think they have a, they don't have a 3D CAD file. Somewhere we should find this exact exact model, which they don't have. Uh, we can search on the internet, maybe ask them if if they do have that. Somewhere we can follow up with them, but um, we can as well start generating it in FreeCAD. And I doubt it. I mean, I. They would have this file here somewhere prominent if they had it, so I doubt it. So, but we want to generate it in FreeCAD. Uh, to make it to make it easy. Say it again. Yeah, I can work with that. That, that, that work. Yeah. The three, the three cat, it's, some, it's something that don't need my, you know, I don't need to think too much. Like right. I, now it's, I don't, I have a, I'm overflow with that. But I can work with that. That's easy, easy work. And it, it takes time off your hands. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we want to do that use this now the other thing worth exploring and the question is do we want to do that now or not is get the you know how this is mounted on these three bearings here well if we copy this exactly then we're not using our universal axis anymore you see like we wanted to simply attach the the extruder to this axis here um, to this point right here that would be our attachment for the 3d printer now perhaps uh, see because what we do like about this is we have this very clever way of belt tightening you just put in these pegs like the basically the if we detail in on that and explode it uh, what you see is that we've got these two pegs so this is already designed this peg goes into that slot there to, to fix the belt, the belt goes through that little hole in the in the peg. So uh, we feel that's a really simple way. It's actually, from what we see, it's much simpler than all this stuff here. 
where you know if you look at this picture it's pretty complicated actually there's multiple parts in there uh, it, this is not as easy to tension the belt as our method but we, I think we can go with this just for try one and just fully just fully replicate this since that's the easiest path at this at this point and then we can go back to taking this and making it fit on our universal axis so we use our the same belt tensioning system as we already use make it easier um, because I think right here like all that complexity with the belt tensioning um, plus all these little little uh, straps we just have a clamshell structure in our our design we've got this this basic clamshell structure that's you know pretty much as easy as it gets and it's used throughout uh, the point of this to make the simplest kind of a design possible and we think this does it because this is used for all the different XYZ so we're, we're, I think we're very happy with this it, this works really well it's very simple um, so the next iteration we would take take the existing uh, the extruder that we're doing right now and simply mount it on this but that don't let's not worry about that right now let's take it one step at a time and that is to do this one one extruder and if we get it in time that we can actually modify the extruder to do this we can do that in this development cycle but if we're out of time we don't you know we start with uh, just copying what already exists before we start modifying it so we can at present use the ends these ends we can use the the one end piece and the second end piece for motion we can use and then we just use their um, axis the, the the sorry the extruder use their extruder so right now the idea would be to to build up the model in, in 3d CAD uh, try to get all the parts and and go so go through this and see how far you can get study this in detail so this is um, so let's do slide new slide or let's get rid of that one and just uh, duplicate slide so here it's useful to go to say slide duplicate slide and then you can pretty much uh, you know get rid of everything in here and say okay Prusa i3 extruder so use existing use current Prusa i3 extruder. That's that's simple. So here I can put a link to this. Um, gone through that. Let's close some of these. Um, Where's the dock right here? So Prusai 3 extruder, we do this one. Just put a link in there. So, so the idea here is build on the Prusa i3. So does this route make sense? We can, if this works, we're done. That's the beauty of it. It's open source. So this is an example of really building upon another project. And because our, our frame system is flexible, we can adapt this exactly to our current frame. So step one, so steps. Steps. Uh, generate 3D CAD file of the above extruder uh, so we know that the you can simply import the SDLs the SDLs already exists SDLs are available 
need to pull in to pull in to basically import other parts like stepper motor bearings uh, nozzle the hot end you know etc so and then make this all available in FreeCAD native format so so create from so the step number one so create individual files of all the parts first and then we can use the master file the assembly file then create a master file then create an assembly file file does that make sense so so the workflow that's good really good in FreeCAD is that you create individual files in FreeCAD format for the individual parts and then you 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 import them into a final assembly and that means it's much easier to navigate that workflow works well within FreeCAD an overall assembly file um, so we have the SDLs of, uh, of the of the extruder or, or... yeah um well we have to find everything we like this is where we just gotta search like online just look at stl or step files now the problem the the most useful thing is if it is if you can import it in step or FreeCAD native format yeah. so the strategy a good strategy would be to look at um strategy look at other 3d printers look at other open source 3d printers and see if you can simply take the files from there and take take part files from there like basically strip it down uh, basically like do your open source chop shop <laughs> you strip out the files the parts from the different uh, and take parts out of those CAD drawings you know like you can parts out of other yeah uh, but specifically like the most useful would be like FreeCAD files because then you know you got native format specifically FreeCAD files then step then uh, STL because I think the STL you want to go from STL the the FreeCAD can't really work with STLs you have to convert it import it and turn it into FreeCAD right so you have to there's some file management uh, issues there and then also McMaster Car, have you heard of that? Yeah. I can, uh, I can get the step files there. Yeah, step files. Step files. Yeah. Uh, so let's do this. And then, but wherever you have, um, so, um, so then cut and paste pictures. Into this document. Like once you have assemblies, like then we can. So the next step is uh, next step is a visual bill of materials. Uh, basically, like put in a, a picture here, and then part labels and links to the actual parts. Yeah, should do a video on how to do a visual part diagram. But basically, you, you put in uh, you know your your CAD, you label it, and then the different arrows point to different parts and there's actual links to the parts so you can create a full bill of materials um, so like for example if you find that little bearing on eBay put a link there or, or Amazon I mean for us it's you know, Amazon is pr pretty good place um, we can also find about like bulk sourcing later but just individual just right now the stuff we can buy readily on eBay and other places uh, we can put links to that so we can get a bill of materials for for this extruder main thing being the the nozzle you know the e3d nozzle so use uh, it's got the e3d hot end it's called e3d um,
Uh, I, there's a good link to that one. It's uh, that one's is open source, so E3D. Let me look that up. Hot end. E3D wiki has the, all that stuff. So yeah, they have a wiki, uh, which is uh, this right here. E3D documentation. Um, so you could probably get the you know, get all the parts. Um, they might even have step files of that of the hot end. I haven't checked, but so the the task is let's generate that CAD file and then upload upload CAD file like whenever as soon as you have anything like you know any of the individual parts files to the wiki or just put like if it's already up some no actually you should re-upload it to the wiki so, because say like the file disappears from somewhere else let's just be redundant and put all the files that you use put them on a upload them on a wiki so you'd have a uh, uh, so we have this page here, D3D. Uh, we've got the extruder page. So document on a D3D extruder page, and then uh, let's just create a create a part files. So I'll just do this. So part files. As soon as you've got any part, like including those simple. Um, SDLs from the Prusa Research site, just up, re upload them here. So, part files. Uh, let's just do a very simple thing like uh, so, part files would be 3D printed. Um, other. So, here we can simply say so, so you know, whatever its name is, uh, part one, and then just put whatever the part you know, file whatever dot fcsdd yeah. yep and then part two and so forth so so we have an exhaustive list of parts and then we can do things like calculate how much print time it requires so from from these parts here we can do we can start getting into fabrication you know uh, print time for example print time is important because we want to find out how difficult it is to print um, and then so 3D printed there's metal so other other parts there's fasteners like a lot of the screws and bolts that's going to be a big category yeah so for, so let's just put everything in detail so just, just the bullet points that's how you do the bullet points I don't know if you've seen that just the star is a bullet point and then we can come up with a complete file and then once we have it we can um, I mean, let's do this as soon as we can. If you have any time, just get get onto this. See if we can complete this. So next Monday, we we're, we're looking at this and seeing if we're missing any parts. So the goal. So actually, what we're supposed to do here is start up a D3D log or meeting log. That's what we promised. Uh, so first task with uh, the task assignments. So. What I can do, so what you and I can do, create uh, this thing, create. Um, so Monday, Feb 6, 2017. Yeah. Um, Generate 3D CAD file. Uh, what I can do, I can definitely look at parts source, get um, get visual bill of materials started. Um, so next week we're looking at okay, we've got the entire CAD file. We can be looking at on FreeCAD. And then we have the entire bill of materials, so we actually have. Uh, so the goal is 3D CAD file assembled, and then visual. Right, 3D file of extruder. Uh, 
um, and calculate the price. So, so, so VBOM complete, and then total price, total price and sourcing available. Mm -hmm. And let's see where we are at that time. And by that time, we hope to have another person on the team. We can get going a little faster. And uh, yeah, the goal is to to get one or two people per week added to the team as we go forward. So uh, that's our current recruiting goal. I'm gonna put post some recruiting announcements and uh, continue on as much as I can here. Mm -hmm. So that's that's our goals for for this week. So is that is that good? Do we do we have any questions? Any questions? No. So we made the, all, all, all the parts of the extruder. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. All the parts of the extruder plus the actual assembly uh, put together. And you will probably find. Yeah, and and the whole assembly put together, so you find all the parts and then assemble them within FreeCAD. And what you will do is you'll find other versions of Prusa i3s out there on the internet, but they're not going to be the same. So we have to do this complete. We can't just say, "Oh, just look at that other part because it's similar." Well, that doesn't work. You have to have the exact thing, otherwise it just won't work, and you have conflicts, right? So. We pretty much have to do it from scratch, but we can import any parts that are identical to the parts we're using. Yeah. So this shouldn't be too difficult. In 10 hours, um, you could probably get get it pretty much done, hopefully. We'll see how far we get by next week to see where we are. And, and as soon as you upload anything, I'm going to try to find parts and upload. Do the, I mean, we're working in... I mean, the point is we're... The goal of these team meetings is that we're working in parallel so as soon as you've got any of the files upload them to the wiki so that I'm not re replicating your work does that make sense do we lose a manual Looks like he popped off. Uh, so to finish up, let's finish up with an email. And that's the the whole goal is that we're working all together on the same thing. So as soon as we've got any material, we upload it to the wiki so that anyone else sees that that's already been done. And we together assemble the, the complete extruder. So anyone who joins the project can actually join that process and collaborate completely pending their knowledge of the FreeCAD package. So And that's done by passing the OSE FreeCAD test which is part of the recruiting strategy. Okay, so thanks a lot. This is it for the first meeting, and we're going on a 3D printer. Take care. See you next week.